Hello everyone and welcome to Barca News. It's August 22nd, 2022 and Barcelona are considering legal action against La Liga in regards to the registration of players. Also, Pierre-Emerick Pierre Aubameyang is very close to his move to Chelsea and Samuel Umtiti could finally be sealing his exit out of Barcelona. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Hello everyone, my name is Mo and I created this channel so it can be a one-stop shop for all Barcelona fans where they can come here and get the latest news in regards to FC Barcelona. Whether it be transfer rumors, injury updates, post-match analysis or anything else, you will find it here. So I invite, so I'd like to invite all of you to please subscribe to the channel so you stay current on all the latest news in regards to our beloved club, FC Barcelona. Now we'll begin with the news that Barcelona achieved its first victory of the season yesterday against Real Sociedad at Anoeta in a difficult match where Barcelona was able to score four goals with two of them coming from Robert Lewandowski, one from Osman Dembele and one from Ansu Fati. Now I will upload a separate video reviewing that match. I tried to upload that video yesterday, however, because of uh, technical difficulties, I was not able to do so. But fortunately, I was able to fix those mistakes today and that video will be coming shortly after this one. Now Xabi did not include Serginho Dest in yesterday's squad, once again the same way he did against Rayo Vallecano. So it seems that Xabi does not count on the American right back and we will see whether these exclusions from matches will convince Serginho Dest to leave the Barcelona during this summer transfer window because as of now, his agent is insisting that Serginho Dest does not want to leave the club. Now another notable absence was that of Jules Koundé who Barcelona were hoping to register prior to yesterday's match but they were able to do so because they still have to clear some space on their wage bill. Now Barcelona were hoping to register Koundé by clearing space in their wage bill by negotiating a salary reduction with Gerard Piquet and a salary deferral with Sergio Busquets. However, La Liga informed Barcelona that they will not accept the salary reduction or the salary of deferral, so Barcelona were unable to register Koundé prior to yesterday's match. Now La Liga has also informed Barcelona that they will not accept any more activation of economic levers. And this has prompted Barcelona to consider legal action against La Liga's president, Javier Tebas. Now Barcelona are also considering having other clubs join them in their complaint against Javier Tebas because the registration of the players is not only an issue that Barcelona is facing, but it's an issue all across La Liga. In fact, on the last in fact, on the day prior to the beginning of La Liga, there were 54 players that they were not registered in the Spanish league. Now as of today, there are four, four other clubs that are struggling to register their players and those clubs are Getafe, Real Betis, Almeria and Real Mallorca with Real Betis having six players on their squad that they are struggling to register. And this is a serious issue plaguing one of the top leagues in the world and it's a direct result of Javier Tebas' action. So Barcelona are now considering a legal complaint against La Liga's president. Now another option for Barcelona to clear space on their wage bill in order to register Jules Koundé is of course to offload Memphis Depay and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Now in the case of Depay, Barcelona have already reached an agreement with the player where the club have agreed to terminate his contract and allow him to leave for free per the Dutch forward's request because he wanted to negotiate a higher salary with his future club. Now Depay's transfer is pending Juventus greenlighting the agreement that they reached with Memphis Depay where they've offered him a two-year contract and a 7 million euro salary. Now in the case of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, the player has already reached a deal with Chelsea and his transfer to the Premier League is pending Barcelona and Chelsea agreeing on a transfer fee. Now Chelsea had initially made an offer of 18 million euros plus Marcos Alonso However, Barcelona rejected that offer because they want cash in order to register Jules Koundé. Now, Barcelona are still in direct contact with Chelsea and it's reported that Chelsea could be making a second offer of 22 million euros fix plus 5 million euros variables. Now, the transfer of Aubameyang could be finalized in the upcoming hours, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel for any new announcements and also make sure to subscribe to the channel because I do put some updates in between the videos in the community tab. Now speaking of Chelsea, the London based club have issued an ultimatum to Barcelona in regards to Marcos Alonso. Now as I've reported many times before, Barcelona had already reached an agreement with Marcos Alonso so he can come to Barcelona and reinforce the left back position. 
and Barcelona had also reached an agreement with Chelsea for the transfer of the player. However, Barcelona had not finalized the transfer because they were waiting to register Jules Koundé. Well, Chelsea have grown tired of waiting for Barcelona and they have reportedly issued the club an ultimatum to make up their mind and decide on whether they are going to take Marcos Alonso or not. Now it's reported that if Barcelona cannot sign Marcos Alonso from Chelsea, they are considering Javi Galan, who the 27 year old who currently plays as a right back for Celta Vigo. Now in my opinion, Barcelona should forego the operations to sign a left back, saving themselves money and instead they should try to have uh, Alejandro Valde compete for the left back position with Jordi Alba, especially with Valde's amazing performance in the preseason and great performance yesterday against Real Sociedad. Now speaking of fullbacks, it's reported that Barcelona have asked Hector Bellerin to wait until the end of the summer transfer window to see if they're going to sign him to reinforce the right back position. Now Hector, as I reported previously, Hector Bellerin is looking to leave Arsenal as a free agent and as a result, he was offered to Barcelona. Now the club are currently trying to sign Juan Foyth from Villarreal, however that operation has hit a roadblock because it's reported that Villarreal are not willing to let Foyth uh, go this late in the summer transfer window. Now, if the operation for Foyth fails, Barcelona will try to sign Hector Bellerin from Arsenal. However, as of now, the club's priority is to sign the Argentinian from Villarreal. Now, on to the news that Frankie de Jong is maintaining his position that he doesn't want to leave Barcelona, nor does he want to accept a salary reduction or a salary deferral. Now, as I reported many times before, Manchester United are very interested in signing Frankie de Jong per their coach's request, Eric Ten Hag, who was Frankie de Jong's coach at Ajax. Now Ten Hag is insistent on a reunion with Frankie de Jong and Manchester United had offered Barcelona 85 million euros for the signing of the Dutch midfielder and they had offered Frankie to make him the highest paid player on the squad and they've even offered him to pay him the deferred salary that Barcelona currently owe him. Now with the signing of Casemiro from Real Madrid, reports had emerged that Manchester United had ended their quest to try to sign Frankie de Jong However, those reports are false and it seems that Manchester United are willing to make one last trip to Barcelona to try to convince Frankie de Jong to make a move to the English club. Now, as I reported in Saturday's video, which I will leave the link for down below in the description in case you want to check it out, the newly promoted Italian club Lecce are interested in signing Samuel Umtiti and it's reported that Barcelona are in advanced talks with the Italian club and it seems that Umtiti could finally be sealing his exit out of Barcelona. Now this deal includes a loan until 2023 with Barcelona covering the entire salary of Umtiti. However, with Lecce potentially paying Barcelona some variables that both clubs have been able to negotiate. Now if Umtiti stays healthy and plays 60% of all of the matches, then Lecce would owe Barcelona 60% of Umtiti's salary. And if Umtiti becomes a starter, then Lecce would have to pay Barcelona the equivalent of Umtiti's transfer fee, which is valued at 3 million euros. Now, if Lecce want to purchase Umtiti after the end of this upcoming season, then new negotiations would have to take place because there is no option or obligation to buy in this loan contract. And this is probably the best deal that Barcelona can negotiate for Samuel Umtiti because unfortunately, due to his physical condition and his incredibly high wages, there are no clubs in the world who are willing to pay his transfer fee, let alone accept his high wages. And this is unfortunate because during the first two seasons at Barcelona, Samuel Umtiti became one of the best center backs in the world, but because of an injury to his knee, which he refused to operate it on in order to be available for the World Cup, he has lost his standing in the world and he's now desperately looking to restart his career. Now hopefully all can go well for Umtiti and he can restart his career and regain his form and that way Barcelona and that way his market value would go up and Barcelona will be able to offload him for a higher price during next summer in 2023. Now on to the news that Abde could be staying at the club with the departure of Memphis Depay and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Now Barcelona had signed Abde to reinforce the Barca B or the Barca Athletic as they're now known. However, given his immense talent and his great future projections, Xabi decided to promote Abde to the senior team. However, with the arrival of the new signings, it was looking like Abde was not going to have much playing minutes during this season. So the club decided to send Abde on loan until the summer of 2023 so he can continue his growth and development. But now with the departure of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Memphis Depay, the club could be considering keeping Abde on the squad and giving him some playing minutes during this upcoming season. 
Now we'll end today's video with the news that Pablo Torre could be sent out to loan to his former team Racing de Santander. Now Barcelona signed Pablo Torre from Racing to reinforce the Barca Athletic with the idea that he would train with the senior team and maybe play some matches with the senior team as well. Now with his great performance during the preseason, Xavi decided that Pablo Torre would exclusively train with the senior team but he would still play his matches with Barca Athletic. Well, since that Pablo Torre is not keen on playing in the third division with Barca Athletic and instead wants to be sent out on loan to his former team, Racing, where, uh, who play in the second division. The Barcelona would rather keep Pablo Torre on their team. However, if the player keeps insisting, they are considering sending him out on loan to Racing and this would be a simple loan like Nikos and Alex Collado where the player would be loaned out until the summer of 2023 with no option or obligation to buy. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like. Also, I would like to invite all of you to please leave a comment down below, giving me all your thoughts and opinions about all the news that I share with you. And finally, I would like to invite all of you to please subscribe to the channel so you can stay current on all the latest news in regards to our beloved club, FC Barcelona. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, Pisca Barça.